girl child our time is now our rights our future women's rights and equal contribution to development has been a heated debate in recent times as the global ecosystem keeps evolving human development is greatly dependent on multiple factors with inclusivity as a major the 2022 team of the international day of the girl child tagged our time is now our rights our future extrapolates the need and urgency to treat gender equality and adherence to human rights as a priority in the wake of this global revolts and advocacy for women's rights are heating up for instance the death of 22 year old Masha Amini following her arrest by the Iran's morality police the guidance patrol over wearing an improper hijab in violation of the Iran's mandatory hijab law on women has sparked an ongoing series of protests and civil unrest against the government of Iran, majorly by women and persons fighting for equality and are awakened to the realities of the place of inclusiveness in development. The traditional blueprint has ingrained a consciousness that turns a blind eye to the needs of recognizing women in society. Despite these challenges, women can continue to shatter glass ceilings and plant a new consciousness that women can be better. Women in academia like Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, in sports like Tobi Musa, in leadership like Ngozi Okonjo Uyala and other equally important fields of human individuals including arts and STEM are making the system to have a rethink. At this point, we must know that to deal with the issue of inequality, we must understand the dynamics of human uniqueness and the need to respect and nurture this uniqueness for greater outcomes. Women and girls around the world continue to face unprecedented challenges to their education, their physical and mental wellness, and the protection needed for a life without violence. Some ways to address the concern of protection and securing the future of the girl child includes engaging government officials, policymakers, and stakeholders. Laws that prohibit girl child marriage and gender based violence should be publicized and enforced. Provision of safe and prejudice free educational institutions and workplaces should be encouraged. Religious and traditional institutions should continually sensitize their followers on the importance of educating and protecting the girl child. Engage key female influencers across industries to be the face of change we want girls to see as possible. Role models speak a thousand ways. Let's change the global conversation and public perception of girls as leaders in any of their chosen endeavor. Showing commitment to raising awareness about and addressing issues that may be a concern or root cause of prejudice against the girl child in our respective local communities or regions or countries. I will conclude by reflecting on the quote of Antonio Guterres, United Nations Secretary General, in commemoration of the 2022 International Day of the Girl Child. Now, more than ever, we must renew our commitment to work together so that girls enjoy and exercise their rights and can play a full and equal part in their communities and societies. Investing in girls is investing in our common future. I don't know. 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 And this reflects negatively on the girl child. It gives them an impression that they can't get there. They can't become what they want to be. If we see more people doing things like Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, Ngozi Okonjo Iweala, in those key positions, it will motivate more people. Role to, model. Yes. Role models to come up and do the same. It would even motivate men to encourage their own girl children to do better. Yes. Sure. And as a girl dad, I must <laughs> agree with everything. <laughs> I must agree with everything you have said. Yeah. Yes, but I think there's a, there's a very critical there's a critical education and reorientation that is required, you know, on both sides, uh, both sides in the sense that, like you said, 
the men have to understand that women can do everything, that a girl child can do everything. That's certainly what I tell my girls, you know. Then the girls must also be educated to know they can do everything. Because what ha what's happened is, because of culture and society, uh, there's a general understanding that the things that a man should do and the things a woman should do, mm -hmm. you know. And, but we, there's been a bit of education over the years that's made us realize that that's not particularly correct. I so if we do, if, yeah, it's stereotypes. Mm -hmm. So if we do a reorientation from the start, for girls to know that you are absolutely capable of doing everything that a man can do. Yeah. Then the girl starts to understand that. Mm -hmm. Then you must tell the men that just because you have this other gender doesn't mean you're better than them or there are things that you can do that they can't do. So the education is both sides. I believe that if we, if we spend time doing this education and reorientation, I believe very strongly that We'll be on our way to you know to proper representation and you know a more equal society. Yeah, Victor. You know, n nature is going to take its full course, which is give or take. Um, in the next twenty years, mm -hmm. some people are going to die, and that's the idea. So you can't escape death, right? And why I said that is we must be ready as young people to shape a new culture. Now, there's a certain culture that have literally um, have not supported the girl child and it's a patriarchy culture it's a misogyny culture and those that have instilled those culture like I said earlier I mean it looks I mean it looks fun weird but it's just the truth there are some certain things that we may not be able to change but of course we keep re-educating and re-educating but as young people we must be ready to when nature takes its full course on the old people who put us in this, you know, dilapidated condition, right? We must be ready to re-engineer a new culture, which is amongst ourselves. Do we, so that we don't repeat what we're fighting. Yeah. Are we really conscious of the fact that we must make a room for the girl child? Or are we reinventing what, you know, the forefathers has installed? So we must even check ourselves within our conversations when we are setting up a team, oh, Elijah be the head, Titi be the assistant head, <laughs> are we not also repeating those patterns? Yeah, exactly. And so we must consciously say, oh, mm. Titi is a better leader, Titi, be the president, you be the assistant president for this committee. Mm. So we always believe that the man must head the committee. Yeah. Why? Sometimes the problem is not Titi, the problem is, the problem is the man. <laughs> it feels as if, oh, a woman can't be here. Yeah. So it's a, it's a problem with self-esteem mm. that a lot of men have anyways. Mm. Yeah. Any man that feels complete in himself and has no self-esteem issues, has no issues reporting to a woman. Sure. But because all your life, your mother reported to your father, something just tells you that there's something wrong with, a, with you reporting to a woman. Very true. So those are the things that you're saying. Mm. That we have to start to do a reorientation mm. and a mind reset for mm. you to know that there's absolutely nothing. It makes you not less, nothing less than the man that you are if you report to a woman. And it's been, I mean, statistics have proven that women are actually better managers. Mm. You know, companies yeah. that have more women on their board actually do better. Mm. So... And the countries that have women as presidents are doing. <laughs> let's not go there, Titi. Let's not go there. It's, it's a momentum, but let's not go there. Let's not I want go there. to ask both of you a question. You as a girl, dad, and you as a woman. I want to get your perspective. The issue of child marriage. You know, um, in Nigeria, um, in a part, in some, in some of the northern states, it's common that child marriage is prominent there. Then the issue of. Um, during terrorism attack or something, these girls are kidnapped and forced into marriage. So, what's your take on this? You and then after that, I would like to get your own perspective. Well, on the issue of child marriage, I think it should be abolished. And very strongly so, because even for it's like saying a young man of 16 is ready to be married. If a young man of 16 is not ready to be married, then why is a young girl mm. of 16 ready to be married? Oh, if yeah. a young man of nine, it's not ready to be the head of a home. Yeah. Why is a young girl of nine ready to be married? Mm. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's really that straightforward. It's, it's exactly. straightforward. Exactly. Exactly. I was going to say, I was going to say, if I'm going to marry off a 10-year-old girl, then start marrying off 10-year-old boys. Yeah. Straight up. So let them 10-year-old girls family. as well. You know, because it's, it's just, there's just no room for it. It makes no sense. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Well, right. let's do our best to protect and educate the girls in our local communities. For and a the more men. secured future, of course, and the men, because it's important. You do that for the boys and the girls to so have a more secured future. Victor is next after the break. Stay with us.